so uh she could follow me uh don't touch anything in here it's all i don't understand what half this stuff does and it seems to always hurt if you do and as she whips around her tail doesn't seem to be fully in her control and it knocks over a bottle <laughs> right i try and actually grab the bottle and stop it from crashing uh dexterity saving throw or dexterity check sorry just a check nope <laughs> nope so you try to be all like suave and like catch it but it just continues to fall onto the floor and you go ahead and you kind of make it look like you were just uh, pushing your hair back or something no i'm not embarrassed i tried oh, okay. to catch it it's the helpful thing to do huh <sighs> let's go okay he probably won't notice um i don't know what he does notice or doesn't notice he's very odd and so she says the woman with the independent <sighs> tail i'll get better control of it it's just I'm not used to a place that's really crowded like this. It's weird, isn't it? As compared to... Oh, come on. It, she leads you all outside, and you step out. Oh, and let me move you guys over to this beautiful, lush forest. Ah. It's like nothing that you've ever seen. To your left and right are just miles of untamed jungle, and there's this small path that you're wandering down. Uh, it's completely alien to anything you've ever experienced before. Uh, again, the heat and the humidity is ever present there. Um, but as you're wandering down this path, following her, she just kind of stretches out, like enjoying being outside. Uh, you look around and you just see uh, humongous trees of uh, flowers and things that, it just seems to more be more fantastical than real, and it's uh, just pulling in, you know, on your imagination. And every now and then, you swear you can see eyes peeking out at you before something darts away, and you hear these calls of birds and animals that you've never heard before. You are very, very far from home. Once I think, once I see the eyes that I think <laughs> are darting out at me, I'm much more active and looking around. Noted. Uh, Theridan uh, is going to take like a deep breath in through his nose and then like breathe out through his mouth um, and clearly sort of uh, slump his shoulders. Uh, even in an alien environment such as this, uh, just being outdoors and being in a, a place that's not a city and not inside makes him feel more comfortable. So Su Suka noticing this kind of circles back. She kind of she mostly moves around on her back back legs but every now and then like she'll jump down and use her front hands to kind of spin around really quickly um she's acting very like she looks like she's probably fully grown but definitely not fully mature do we know what point. race she is uh go ahead roll a history check <laughs> no no <laughs> you are just very perplexed by this. Anybody else who wants to roll a history? To... I ah. would. Let me um, get my thing back down here. Oh, there it is. This. Gertel, you've heard of the tabaxi people. You know of the cat people. That's something that's known in your tribe. So. Just by legend. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we were uh, wolf people for a long time before the wolf spirit um, freed us from our lycanthropic curse, and we heard tale that there were also cat people out there. We do have herds, and we also have tails. <laughs> so you've never met met one of my people before? Uh, no. Oh, you are far from home, aren't you? Well, I'm Suka of the Greenleaf tribe. Hi, nice Suka of you. the Greenleaf tribe. I'm Bairdin of the Bairdin. Moonfang tribe. Moon, I like that. Well, I'm Emerel. Emerel. I'm Dick. Dick. And, and I'm Marty. Dick and she kind of tap. Did Marty pop up out of the shoulder? Or... He, he's yeah. He's sort of so. Uh, yeah, Marty pops out of the shoulder and sort of you know said, "I'm Marty," and it's sort of again. Dick doesn't like it when he comes out the shoulder. He really wants them to come out his side. You know, he's like, oh, for God's sakes. My ears, what Marty. Is, my ears. What's Dick wearing on the, on top? Like, it, does he have, like, bare shoulders? Or, or is he just shirtless? It's uh, it, it's basically, like, torn, 
right? Like there was an intentional tear in, you know, this, this let, let's just say, uh, lab coat. <laughs> you know, there's a tear in it for, for him to come out. But, but it's kind of like Dick to some extent will, will accommodate him, right? So if he comes out the side, sort of flip it to the side. All right. So uh, Suka comes up and she kind of taps on where his head is. Hey! I've never seen that before. That That's it's really interesting. Well, get used to it, lady. Oh, <laughs> Marty's getting snappy. That's the rarity. Huh. I'm just saying, a little wound up. Well, come on. Let me take you down to the village so we can get you situated. Uh, so I've been hired as your guide to take you where you need to go. Um, but I don't want you guys to go anywhere today. Um, I made that mistake with the last group. They didn't do very well the first day. It, was, it took them a couple days to get used to the heat and everything. So... Okay. <laughs> uh, so come on. And she leads you down the path a little bit more. It takes you about a half hour worth of walking. And you come out and you see this village that's uh, perched on a river. And so there's some fishing boats. There's a lot of life happening in the village. Um, it's sort of like the, the image there is, is there's no real distinct end to the jungle in the start of the village. It's just sort of like the village kind of is organically part of the jungle. Uh, no real farming that you could see. Like some people have maybe like a couple of uh, flower pots and things to grow specific herbs. I see a few goats run here and there. Um, and again, you're hearing the calls of animals that you've just never heard of before. So, I asked Suki if there's anything dangerous I should be immediately aware of. Well, pretty much anything in the jungle can kill you. So I wouldn't, don't leave the village. And when you are with me, you're not going to leave the path. And I take us off the path for a specific reason. Uh, there's lots of snakes. Um, there's some really nasty birds. Even some of the bugs are really bad. Um, there's also the big things and then um I'm sorry the what who that the uh well you know there's these butterflies that can swarm and I I love man I was getting in trouble with them I I like try to you know you know, I, I love chasing them and, but there's these other ones that are really specific and they will attack you and then like there's the big lizard things and then you know that, that last I think she part said the big mumble. lizard things it's like a part of a bird uh, <laughs> probably get attacked by bird parts. Well, there are birds. Yes, there's lots of scary birds too. Um, While we're walking, can I be um, like grabbing some berries and things with a, a, a nature or a survival check? Uh, yeah, do a nature check. Uh, so you see some berries and stuff, and you start picking them, and then Suka notices you and just kind of comes over and shakes your hand to get him to drop out. Poison? I'll, I could teach you some of the things that you can eat. There is quite a lot to eat around here, but also quite a lot that's dangerous. Fizzbang seems to like all the dangerous stuff. Uh, he like, That's why he likes being here, I guess. And so, come on, this way. I'll take the poison ones anyway, just put them in my bag. Okay. Don't eat those, and if you do, I warned you. What would happen? Uh, well, those ones usually, let's see. He's got the red ones. He's, you're a dwarf, aren't you? I am. So is he. We both oh, are. Uh, he's very small for a dwarf. <laughs> he's kind of, uh, he takes it personally, so. Oh, sorry. Well, He's dwarfs... bigger on the inside. Dwarves don't do so bad with that one, but it will make you pretty much for two days straight. It sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> yes. Like I said, you've been warned. Seems um, situational to me. <laughs> so, here's the village. Uh, this is Kurjan. It's the last little bastion of humanity and life outside of the jungle. So... It's a bit rough here. Got a place for you to stay. Um, now, what all do you have for provisions and supplies? Well, 
we have a number, we have approximately five days worth of rations, uh, one water skin a piece. What should we have? Uh, I'll make sure you each get another water skin. Um, ah, and you're going to need some herbs. Come here. Which herbs? <laughs> uh, so she leads you down through through some winding paths past. So you see a, a collection. There's uh, definitely a lot of other tabaxi uh, looking, you know, just a wide range of different types of uh, cats that you're seeing. Um, some are like all black. Uh, some are more spotted like her. Uh, you see, even see some with like more tiger stripes looking. Um, <clears throat> and you see there's uh, lots of different humans. You also see some very uh, pale, pale, pale dwarfs uh, with like pasty white skin around uh some of them have face paints on um especially on the dwarves they'll have like red red lines on their cheeks and then going down their noses um the clothing all tends to be very practical situational um you're not seeing a lot of animal hides or things like that but it's more organic matter like uh hempen clothing and things like that um suka seems to you know just kind of merrily say hello to everybody she moves around with a lot of energy and grace um Everybody else kind of normally just kind of moving along, uh, maybe a little slower than you might be seeing normally just because of the heat. They're not wanting to get move around too fast, um, but that doesn't seem to bug her. As she's walking, I study her movement to see how she moves so easily through the jungle. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make, give me a quick perception check. Oh, yeah. Uh, so one of the things you're noticing is like she kind of does this stop start thing where she keeps trying to go like she starts going along and kind of naturally moving where she's uh almost like half climbing on things so she'll like take a quick leap off the ground fall onto the side of a tree kind of half leap off of it claw to something else and then she remembers like you guys are there and she'll drop down and start walking again but then as she's walking she kind of hel can't help herself but start bounding around okay within the <laughs> bounds within the bounds of what i'm capable of doing i try and imitate that Okay, go ahead and make an acrobatics check. <coughs> Bless you. Actually, you're pretty able to imitate her, and as she notices that, she starts kind of giving you some pointers, and it's going to be a little hard without claws. Maybe you can get them to make you something that will give you, like, a good handhold on the trees. Being but you're small, pretty good at no. this. <laughs> uh, so, here. And she brings you over, and you see a, um, a lady named Palmy. Is it she, or she introduces her. This is Pommy. She grew some of the herbs around here. Pommy, they're new to the area. And the lady kind of looks up. I could tell from their clothing, dear. Welcome. Bow deeply. So, <laughs> Thank you, Pommy. So, you all are new here. As yes. you said. Yes, well... Few things about survival here. You're going to need to drink a lot of water, more than you think, especially seeing as it feels like you're drinking the air as you breathe it. But noted. Here she starts picking uh, different uh, herbs from her garden and tying them together with these little little bits of twine, and she hands each of you about uh, three packets of these little herbs. For the first few days, put that in your water. It will help you stay hydrated it'll help you drink drink and not get sick as you get used to being here Watch can i try to revenge. identify what's in there <laughs> uh, sure go ahead and make it a nature check <clears throat> can i do that too yep i uh, see so recognize some of the herbs some of them you haven't seen before um one of them being mint that's in there um which can't really tell if it's in there as like an ingredient or more just for taste and flavor um but it's certainly like a an interesting collection um and she notices you you guys kind of looking at the she's like i can give you cuttings if you'd like i would love that <laughs> yes please and so she get kind of digs through her garden and gives you guys these little little cuttings and if you get those in soil within a week or so this should survive uh, Bar Bairdin takes them with great care um, and places them in, in a little pouch that he has that's uh, uh, well set up for holding on to cuttings and pieces of 
uh, living plant matter. All right. All right. Okay, you're not taking them out in the jungle today, right? No, no, no. Made that mistake once. Not doing it again. We're going to let them rest for a day, get used to the air, and then we'll go. She kind of nods. Right. You're going to want to head over to... gamer got some jokes. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to want to head over there and... uh... Oh, did we lose... Oh, I'm still here. My video cut out, so I was re- reloading it. Okay, okay. Oh, the invisible dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, she says, go over there. You're going to see Tom. He'll give you some extra supplies and things if you need them. Is that the same Tom? <laughs> no, this is your DM sucking at coming up with names on the fly because she forgot to write out the shopkeeper names. <laughs> Meriden's gonna think that it's the same time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tom, I knew that guy. <laughs> what a coincidence! So, uh, Zuka nods and goes, "Okay, good." And she leads you down. And um, it's not so much. Uh, some of the paths between the houses are actually like dirt paths, but a lot of it is raised platforms. So, like you're walking on. Uh, small wooden, like, little pl- platforms leading between, between places and up places. As you guys are looking around too, you notice that there's actually some homes that are up in the trees. And so this place is almost, like, built as part of the jungle. <clears throat> um, she leads you through another portion of the town and then into this small little hut that's, uh, it's all open air on the sides, so it's like, uh, Basically, like, woven grass walls, and then, like, a big gap, and then the ceiling coming down. And inside, you see a black tabaxi. uh, With some gray kind of coming around the tops of his head. Ah, Suka, bounding around as always, I see. She was teaching us. (laughs) Good, well... If you learn to move like her out there, there's a much better chance of surviving. So, welcome! Uh, and how well provisioned are you? I'm gonna guess not well enough, given the fact that you're the third person to ask us that. <laughs> hmm. It's just, people always think they're ready for the jungle. So currently, eight days worth of rations, two water skins, herbs to go in the water for the first few days to ward off whatever we need to ward off. And what else are we missing? Uh, I've got some cocoa powder. (laughs) What's cocoa powder? You you should put it in your water. It'll be nice. Goes well with mint. Hmm. He nods and goes, right. Are you trading items or do you have coin? coin. Right. And he dips down behind, starts walking around the shop, and then he, he makes a small stack of things. Like, 15 gold for all that, and we'll call it good. What is all that? Uh, so you have, uh, basically mosquito netting, some other herbs to burn that will be, like, a pest, uh, bug repellent. Okay. <clears throat> uh, another water skin each. <clears throat> and then hammocks for all of you. Okay, so... Can I identify the herbs well enough to go forage for them? That's a... a I didn't write it down, but that's one of the one abilities of the things... that I have is the ability to go forage for, for rations. And if yeah. I could take a good look at the herbs for the mosquito herbs, I don't, I don't want to pay for them. I want to go out and collect them myself. All right, go ahead and make a nature check. Was the money that we got for uh, supplies, was that 50 gold a piece, or was that... 50 for, gold like, total whole for the whole okay. group. Yep. Oh, but it sounds like the like mosquito netting and the hammock and stuff, like there's one for each of us along with the fifteen gold that's being given. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh and I just assume Emerald is the one who actually took the fifty extra fifty gold. Yes, I'm taking on petty cash. Uh you're filling the role I fill in my group, which is the scribe. No, I, I think I'm gonna be the straight man in this one. <laughs> That does seem like it's playing out that way. <laughs> Which is a very unusual thing for me, so. <laughs> Gernald, um, 
it doesn't look like anything you're very familiar with, and it looks like a lot, like, it, the leaves are very similar in shape to a lot of other leaves that you've seen, um, so it, you think maybe if you spend a couple days studying it, you could probably figure it out. I guess we'll pay for it. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I try and negotiate, uh, the tabaxi merchant down from 15 gold. <laughs> All right. How how are you going to persuade him to? Well, is he telling me that? First of all, is he telling me the truth that this is all we're going to need? We've got supplies and food. There's plenty of food out there. Honestly, food rations are a bit redundant, but it's good to have redundancies. Ah, you remind me of something. <clears throat> And he uh, does dip behind the counter or walks around again, and then he comes back out with uh, four cloaks. Okay. Uh, they are... <clears throat> so these aren't um, leather. It is a fabric, but it's not any fabric that you're used to. It's like a plant... It's a plant matter that's been mashed, and uh, as you guys pick it up, you can feel it's very oiled. It's like, Forgot this. You're going to need these from the rain. Tell you what. Because I forgot it and almost sent you out of here ill-prepared, 20 for everything, we'll call it good. To include the cloaks. To include, will include the cloaks? Man, it sounds like in the jungle you've got everything we It's been weather lucrative having more adventurers come here. All right, well, let's call 20 good and get on out of here. Uh, Zuka, do make sure you properly educate them about what's out there. I told him everything could kill him. He just kind of shakes his head. So what could re what do we really need to be on the lookout for? Probably those gizzards. <laughs> the giant lizard. Giant lizards. Can you oh, be those more sound specific? Bad too. <laughs> we try to avoid them. They live here. They've lived here for ages. It's part of why the jungle remains so wild and unexplored. Nobody wants to go wrestle with those things. There's some that are smallish, uh, the size of a chicken. They can swarm, though, and be a threat, just like anything. There's others that are the size of their heads top the trees. Okay. Now, most of those ones... You don't have to worry about they're interested in eating the trees. There are some that are more interested in eating the ones that eat the trees. Or anything else. Okay, well... Generally speaking, they won't fight to the end, but they'll fight for a long time. So how do we fight them effectively? Stay far away. Don't get in close. If you get in close, stay to the back of it. Make it more of a pain for it to eat you than the joy of eating such a small, scrawny meal. Okay. So, be obnoxious. Got it. <laughs> Greg Nold, you got that? I'm not very small. <sighs> or scrawny. The other Chicken. part. No. Dick, yes, Dick. got that. <laughs> Dick and Marty have sort of been taking it all in, talking. You, you've sort of heard a little bit of mumbling, uh, but not really detecting anything. But then there's just this kind of odd comment. It's like, yeah, Marty, it sort of reminds me of that scene. And what was it? The second one, Lo Jurassic Park Lost World. Oh, yeah, that, I think it was an underrated movie. What is he talk? Does anybody know what he's talking about? <laughs> you all can roll an insight. <laughs> Uh, Tom and Zuka are both kind of... Oh, I didn't see it. Hang on. Oh. Wow. Good lord. All right. I got no idea. All right. Uh, MRL. In the monastery, one of the things you studied were these people that are traveling from farther realms. Places beyond the prime material. Okay. And you know that they speak of things that are very strange. Things that 
you've never heard of before and act bizarrely and are flummoxed by some of the most simple things that you could imagine. Okay, so he is a realm <laughs> traveler. Do you say that aloud? I, I walk up to Dick and Marty <laughs> and um, just take him off to the side again, try and subtly say, how many realms have you been to? Look, Emerald, I, I, I feel like you're a smart guy. I, I, you seem very insightful, but you're, you're really just going to need to kind of back off on this one. Okay, for oh, right now, I will. You and me are going to have to have an honest talk later. Jeez, jeez, Dick, I, I think I, I think it wouldn't hurt to, to maybe let him in on some of it. Marty, Marty, shut your mouth. All right, I back off from this for right now, but we're going to talk later. He's very strange. He is very but strange. entertaining. <laughs> Well, all right, let me take you to where you're going to stay for today and tonight. And that way you guys can rest and kind of just get to know the area a little bit. And I'll t try to tell you a little bit more about the giant lizards. Okay. And so she leads you um, actually up into, not fully up into a tree, but like uh, basically like thick third story <clears throat> is where this okay. hut sits. Um, and again, it's more of a hut. It's just kind of an open area. Um, with the woven grass walls and, you know, the upper part. And as soon as she walks in, one of the things she does is she kind of just quickly runs around chasing out all these little tiny lizards that have come in. Like little geckos. Alright. <laughs> oh, shit. It's Lost World, Marty! <laughs> I don't know what, what that is! What are you looking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Prepare for... We're going to leave early, early tomorrow morning before it gets hot. Every day it rains here, pretty much. Some days not, but every day you're going to get a little bit of rain, most likely. So that would be what these cloaks are for, right? Yes. I assume you don't like getting wet. Uh, d it depends, but sure. Okay. Well, so, you know, just wear them when it rains. Um, otherwise, probably going to be too hot in them. We're When we're out... Do not go off the path. I'm very serious about that. Do not go off the path. Okay. But what if there's uh, something interesting off the path? Like a, <laughs> ooh, well, a if there's path or a, a tree. Well, you let me know and I'll see if it's safe. <laughs> if it's safe, we'll go and we can explore some things. But I assume you guys want to get where you're going. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right, so signal for danger. If I do this, or stop moving and be silent. I'm assuming you guys are all pretty good at protecting yourselves. Well, four of us are. Three of us are. <laughs> well, there's four, four of you us, here. Five of us Three of us are. Sometimes. <laughs> it's just one, two, two. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Don't, don't worry, we'll take care of Crazy Pants. <laughs> yeah, we, we we have a little trouble on that one. Right, okay. So, be silent. Uh, if we run into danger, I'll try to tell you guys how to take care of the danger. So, I mean, in general, most of the things out here, if you put up a fight, they'll run away. When we no. camp for the night, uh, some we will need somebody on watch. And we're not going to sleep on the ground. Do not sleep on the ground. That's what the hammocks are for. What happens if we sleep on the ground? Uh, well, let me see. Hold on. And she darts outside and you see her just quickly like scampering up the tree. And she comes back with a twig. And on the twig, you see a bunch of ants circling around it. So these guys are pretty much everywhere and they'll eat pretty much anything that's laying on the ground. And she uh, picks up like uh, just a little bit of a, you know, she's got like a little bit of bread in her pocket and she kind of throws it on the ground, throws the stick and you just see these ants immediately swarm over the bread like 
and kind of turn it into this little like writhing cube on the ground before it's gone and then they're all kind of <coughs> gathering back on the stick well that's problematic don't sleep on the ground and you're fine <laughs> so I'm also taking it keep moving if we are on the ground don't stand still yes okay Gragnold you got that oh, I got it something something ass <laughs> something something sleeping got it keep moving <laughs> uh, I wonder if that's why she's so jumpy <laughs> Well, it helps you move. So, where are we going? Do you know where we're going? No. Okay, the last group didn't either. Right, so. And she's gonna kind of- We have a rubbing. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I pull out the rubbing. That way. Right. <laughs> oh, well that's not a map. Right, it's something that was laid over an object and coloring was put on it to rub it against, hence the term rubbing. Oh, okay. So that's what you're getting that thing then. Do you know where oh. it is? Uh, Do you have it? I don't have it. I sort ah, of... That would have saved okay. us a lot of time. So what I've been told is you're going to the pyramid. The pyramid? Mm-hmm. Okay. So... I am to bring you to the pyramid and then come back. And it's going to take us about four or five days to get to the pyramid. So given it's going to be four or five days in each direction, why do we only have a week's worth of rations? Because we can find plenty of food in the jungle. Okay. I mean, like, there's food everywhere. You can even eat those ants. Like, if you catch them and, like, cook them up, they're actually pretty good. Challenge accepted. Okay. <laughs> How do we catch them? Dangling the short dwarf? <laughs> Don't you know anything about hunting? I think that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I have and the uh, shorter one. <laughs> and again, she immediately kind of climbs outside, climbs up. She comes back with a gigantic leaf. And in the middle of the leaf, she puts a few more bits of bread. And the ants that have been kind of running around on the floor come up onto the leaf and quickly come in and start eating the bread. And then she just folds the leaf up and ties it up. That's how you catch him. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but how do you make bread out here? Oh, well, we have to trade for it. That's what the rations are for. <laughs> ah, yeah. Or, or, you want some berries? <laughs> well, Don't I'd rather... Those. <laughs> I'd rather not get any more ants in my house. It just chucks the, the thing outside. Right, so you're going to the pyramid. Uh... Well, and like you said, it's five days out, but it's only going to take me probably about two days to get back. Emerald, I think she's faster than you. <laughs> let's get let's get moving in the morning then. All right. Um, and so as the day wears on, she starts just to chatter. She's very chattery. Um, and one of the things she does try to t explain, like. Uh, some of the different snakes and other things that you might be seeing as you walk through the jungle. Okay. And go in. Um, around what would be probably like two o'clock in the afternoon, it starts to just downpour. Uh, like almost like a waterfall outside. Uh, it lasts for about half hour, twenty minutes, and then it stops. Just pretty much, that's going to be what it's like every day. Okay. Uh, we're well. not going to travel at night because, well, that's pretty dangerous, and we can set up at things at night, so. As long as we have someone on watch, we should be okay. All right, well, and then let's get let's get to rest and let's take off in the morning. All right, she shows you guys how to hang up your hammocks. You have sleep in the hammocks, rest up. Nobody lost hit points, so we're good. Um, <clears throat> and so you feel like you have just finally gone to sleep uh, and it's hard sleeping in that kind of humidity and heat like you feel like you're supposed to have a blanket over you but you just can't stand having anything because it's so hot sucks um, to be you guys I don't have to sleep <laughs> that's right I'm sure your meditation has really helped along by all this heat <laughs> I'm very mindful of the heat <laughs> you're mindful of the sweat as it trickles down your back the sensation of it beating on your forehead. Oh, yes. Very aware. 
all right.